Good evening. When the first American astronaut steps out onto the surface of the moon, this is what he'll be wearing. It's called an extravehicular mobility unit, better known as a space suit. And the people who built it call it the astronaut's own personal spacecraft, since it has incorporated in it all the systems the spacecraft does to keep the astronaut alive and, above all, protected from the totally alien environment all around him. Now, probably the first thing you notice about this suit as I talk is a constant hiss in the background behind my voice. Well, the astronaut learns to live with that. That's why he's alive. It's the noise made by the inflow of the air into his suit, which either comes, if he's in the spacecraft, through a tube like that, or if he's outside, coming in through from his backpack strapped on the back there. The whole suit weighs more than I do, and it's tremendously complicated and cumbersome, obviously because it's not meant to be worn walking around in the full gravity of Earth. It takes the astronauts, after some years of practice, only five minutes to put it on and take it off. It takes me a lot longer than that without help. So to show you how it's made up, I'm going to get some help to, as it were, do a space undress. First off are the extravehicular gloves, the gloves that are worn when the astronaut's outside the spacecraft. They unlock from a metallic ring on the sleeve and are covered with layers of insulating material. Each glove is tailored to fit each astronaut's individual hand. On his back, the emergency oxygen supply and backpack. Now that's what keeps him alive when he's out on the lunar surface or doing some extravehicular activity in space, walking between the two spacecraft. That, for example, is necessary possibly during an emergency. That has enough systems on board to keep him alive, warm and relatively happy for four hours. On his head, there are three basic sets of visors. The first one, going down now, is the visor that protects against meteorite impacts. And the second one, going down now, gold-covered, protects against glare. And they are fitted on to a kind of over-helmet, which comes straight off, revealing underneath the basic plastic pressure helmet. This is the seal that keeps the astronaut alive when he's inside the suit. And the seal is undone simply by unscrewing the pressure helmet from and with a little difficulty in my case, from the top of the neck of the suit. Underneath the basic pressure helmet, the communications helmet with small microphones and earpieces in order to communicate with either the spacecraft or via the spacecraft mission control at Houston back on Earth. You notice there the change in noise as the pressure helmet came off. Now this air that's entering through the tube is venting itself up behind my head. On his feet, the astronaut has, as he's out on the lunar surface, lunar overboots. And these are popped on and strapped. And they go on over the top of the basic integral suit boot. And as this one comes off, you'll see that the boot itself, the basic boot, is part of the leg of the spacesuit itself. And what's left is this, the integrated thermal meteoroid garment, which does exactly what it says. It keeps the astronaut warm and it protects him from meteoric impact. It's covered all over with flaps and pockets and controls and containers. And before we show you what's underneath, let's get some more help and get this nozzle, air nozzle, undone. And check out the communications link. And now you'll see just how difficult it is for those astronauts to get the garment off in space. And if you can do that in a spacecraft, then you've got good reason to go to the moon. Here, then, the entire outer part of the spacesuit. And so the astronaut outside his spacecraft has now only one more garment underneath. This one, the liquid cooling garment, as it's called. And it answers the problem that they discovered on the Gemini flights related to the fact that once in an extravehicular spacesuit, an astronaut can get extremely hot doing very simple tasks. This garment answers that problem. 
cooling liquid is pumped in through these large tubes and then routed away through lots of very small tubes that run along next to the astronaut's skin and tacked on behind the net-like substance of this garment. And Rusty Schweikart describes the effect of this garment as being very pleasant, like stepping into a cold shower. And from there, we're left with two understandably very basic problems. How do they deal with their waste products? Well, liquid waste is piped away along a permanently attached tube to a metallic reservoir that's set here on the stomach. And solid waste is dealt with by these underpants filled with a highly absorbing material and acting rather like baby's nappies. So that's it, down to the skin. And after all that performance, it doesn't surprise me that all the astronauts want to do when they get back to Earth is head straight for the bath. Fly me to the moon and let me sing the romance of the moon. Let you and I fly on to the moon and Mars. <laughs>